started. Uh, good evening. I'm Karen Stolfa, the Library Director. Thank you for coming out for tonight's presentation of Hiking the Bay Circuit Trail, a video journal. The Library is sponsoring this event with Green Hansen. Please join me in welcoming the hosts of the program, Dan and Marilyn Brielman and Alan French, who will share information and stories about this 200-mile natural wonder. Good evening, and thank you for coming tonight for our multimedia presentation on the Bay Circuit Trail in the Environment. I'm Marilyn Brillman, one half of e-awakening.com. My husband, Dan, and I, we produce environmental videos where we shine a spotlight on people, groups, and organizations that are doing positive things for the environment. Tonight, Dan will be showing some clips from his Bay Circuit trail hike and talking about his experiences in connection with the environment. And Alan French, a founder and chairman of the Bay Circuit Alliance from 1992 to 2012, is going to be talking about his experiences and he's been involved with the trail for well over 25 years. And at the end of our presentation, we have a couple of local people, Maureen Toomey and Phil Clemens, and they're going to be talking to us about things that are happening right here in this area. Dan writes and performs his own original music for all of our videos. And we'd like to start tonight's presentation with a song he wrote especially for the Bay Circuit Trail. It's called Trail Town. Thank you, Marilyn. I've been hiking all day, out on the trail. I'm pretty tired, but I'm inspired. I've been seeing the sights, earthly delights, and it's alright. Now the time comes around, and I found Trail Town. The people are friendly. Glad to see me. I think I'll stay right here in this cool breeze. Enjoying a tasty breeze on an outdoor patio. Though I don't think I'll get this to go, I think I'll stay for a while in this trail town. On the Bay Circuit Trail, there's a trail town. The spell is cast in heads and mass. A trail town. It's in Massachusetts. <laughs> That's always the toughest part, getting warmed up. <laughs> All right. The Bay Circuit Trail is our gateway back to nature, right here in our own backyards. We have a map of the entire Bay Circuit Trail, starting in the north at Plum Island and arcing around the entire city of Boston. As you see here, there's two ways to go. I took the outer trail, but the inner trail has dots. That means it's incomplete. And then as you go along, you'll see a couple more ways that you can go into Kingston Bay, which is two ways to go into Kingston Bay. <coughs> so let me tell you why I hiked the Bay Circuit Trail. Ten years ago, we started our website, e-awakening.com. Eight years ago, I quit my job as a TV news cameraman in Boston. And that's when Marilyn came up to me and said, you've always wanted to hike the Appalachian Trail. If you hike the New England section, I'll be your support person. Well, seven years ago, we produced a one-hour documentary of that hike called The Mountain Song, and that's on our website. In 2013, we were thinking, what could we do that's different? And uh, I was reading in an AMC magazine that the Bay Circuit Trail is within reach of millions of people right in their own backyards. And it was the same time that I was reading this book, this book, Blessed Unrest, by Paul Hawkins. It's about the biggest movement ever, and no one saw it coming, the environmental movement. So I thought, why not make my hike of the Bay Circuit Trail a search for environmental heroes? So 
Sorry. And we're, <laughs> that's okay. We're, you know, we're psyched to be here. I hiked 22 separate days, and Marilyn and I produced 22 separate segments of the Bay Circuit Trail hike. Let's join the adventure crew on the Bay Circuit Trail. Come on along and help me sing this song. We're the adventure crew. Join the adventure crew for over 200 miles of the Bay Circuit Trail in Massachusetts. One end starts at Plum Island, and the other on the shore of Kingston Bay. The Bay Circuit Trail arcs around Boston, going through 37 communities. Follow the white blazes up hills, through wetlands, and across escurs. There's a nice interesting old trail on the other side of this valley. It's a network of people saving open space, protecting the land, and preserving its beauty for future generations. And after over a century of work, everything is coming together. It's time to take a hike and enjoy this environmental wonder. The Bay Circuit Trail is fun, it's educational, and it's now. Check out the Bay Circuit Alliance website, baycircuit.org. And see all the segments of e-awakening.com series featuring the Bay Circuit Trail. Cause we're all connected by the trail Closer to nature in the day Cause we're the adventure crew That's me and you And the whole world too I can still picture the Bay Circuit Trail in my mind. The red-tailed hawk that landed 20 feet above me in the trees, raising its talon as if into a fist, and a deer munching on vegetation and popping its head up. On day five of my hike, I hiked through the J.C. Phillips Wildlife Sanctuary, the Boxford State Forest, along some roads, into some conservation land, into the Harold Parker State Forest, and then up to the Mary French Reservation, where I met Al French for the first time. Creating the Bay Circuit Trail wasn't easy, and it didn't come out like it was dreamed to be. One man who knew the trials and tribulations of building a trail was Ben Mackay. Ben Mackay had a dream. Oh, Ben Mackay is also the guy who, who uh, came up with the idea for the Appalachian Trail. But Ben Mackay had a dream of the Bay Circuit Trail as a two-mile wide swath of green arcing around the entire city of Boston. Ben Mackay was a true environmental hero. And we have environmental heroes around us, alive and well today. And we're going to meet one of our contemporary heroes. But first, let's see some of the sights and hear some of the sounds along the way. A wide trail and open forest greet me for this beautifully cool morning on the Bay Circuit. Amazed to see this creature hovering in front of me like a tiny <coughs> helicopter, a hoverfly. It's hard to miss this scarlet tanager doing something like a morning dance just above me in the trees. It seems to me it's grooming, its feathers vibrating, a very special moment. Then it's by a dangling leaf to a bog, a swampy area, a concert of birds singing, frogs croaking, nature at its finest. Glorious bright blue skies and the sun. Today is very special because of meeting with a man that I've heard so much about. If it weren't for Alan French, there wouldn't be a base record. He's a hot guy to say no. <laughs> but who is this man walking through the wetlands with a shopping bag in hand? And what got him started on reviving the dream of the Bay Circuit Trail? Simply by going to a meeting at the Appalachian Mountain Club's Boston headquarters. He had a store. So he was kind of the uh, corporate uh, world. Or, uh, he was representing the corporate world. And, uh, and they were talking about doing a trek. 
and he um, uh, he asked them, well, on this track, do you uh, have any need for an old geezer like me? <laughs> That's how he put it. And what was Al's secret for galvanizing the passions of so many people, waiting for a leader to tie it all together, working at the grassroots? What that really did was it inspired people to get really interested in the bass circuit. A lot of people volunteered. And the whole notion that Al came up with, which I think was his genius, was this is a bottoms-up thing. You find people who are interested in every community, and you let them work out their part. You get them together so the trails meet at the town border. State was running it sort of as a zoning question where they tried to get all the towns in the Bay Circuit to do their master planning for buying of land and so forth. The Park Service said, get out there. You'll get the people that will use the land, then they'll vote for it. That's how you drive the program. And it wasn't my idea, but I bought it off mine and sank it. Our next speaker is Al French and he's been involved with the trail for well over 25 years. He's going to be talking about his experiences and giving us a brief history of the Bay Circuit Trail. Well, I was just saying that the, to put the history of the Bay Circuit, which was first proposed in 1929, uh, in five minutes. It just hasn't worked and I've tried 40 times so I've given up. You're not going to get much. What I'm going to try to do is talk about experiences, not my own but mainly from my own point of view. And I'm going to talk about the three times out of six times that I have walked the whole 200 miles in various ways. Uh, so I, I'm going to talk about three of those times. And I'm also going to end up talking about probably the most emotional experience I had in 25 whatever years it is, which happened to be in your town of Hanson. So, starting out, I, I'm beginning to think that I don't get them in the right order, but uh, and they may not be. But certainly the first two were quite a while ago, and. Uh, one was uh, during one of our, we had about 10 or 11 what we called treks, where in various, sometimes two ends to the middle, sometimes in various with bikes and so forth. But we tried to do about once a year where we'd get people out on the trail to publicize it while we were building it. And <clears throat> I remember one time uh, when I did it by myself uh, with a lot of support but I had a lot of really great experiences. It's just it's so amazing to be so close to a major population center but not feel that way. Uh, the other time was after my wife Mary retired from the school system in Andover. I didn't have to ask her. I, I kind of kept quiet about it, but she said, the first thing I wanted to do, Alan, I'd like to walk the Bay Circuit with you. <coughs> and, uh, and that's what we did. So the other experiences and to be with somebody you like love for 20 days no telephones no cell phones and no day. Uh, it's an experience that is just something I, I will never forget with just the two of us uh, it was maybe half complete but we could you can always walk it because it's never that far from a public road I mean if you have to uh, and we did a lot of research. In that particular time, we spotted cars because it wasn't that complete. But we just had that time to be together. And uh, the third experience is the most recent. But what's recent? I retired in 2012, so it's quite a ways back. And before I retired, I took one time when I said, I'm going to walk this thing by myself. And by that time, which is roughly 2000. 11, 10, I forget when it was, the trail is essentially complete. Uh, and I had the experience of, uh, I didn't touch a car. I, I started one morning, it was in the fall, which is the best time to walk the Bay Circuit, frankly, in many places. Uh, I remember leaving my home in Andover on one day, 
and uh, 20 days later, roughly, returning to my home from the other direction, I went west to Lowell, around Framingham, all the way around to this area, and I took the commuter rail uh, from Kingston, right near where you are, to South Station. I then walked the uh, Ken the trail, you know, along, uh, you know, the, the Kennedy Greenway, whatever it is, to North Station, got on another commuter rail, went to uh, uh, Newburyport, and all of this, and then returned in a couple of more days to my house, coming the other way through Boxford and so forth. But the whole time, I didn't touch the wheel of a car. I started and I stayed with friends and people I had worked with in the Bay Circuit program. And uh, if I began to get dark, I, I did have a cell phone at that point because I, I had to have some way of saying, come get me, I, I'm, I'm not making it, it's getting dark, I don't think I can find your house. And, and they would come get me, take me back to their house, feed me, shower, and get me a shower. The next morning, they would take me back to where I'd left off. And that, I'd say, was the third experience. And then finally, somewhere along the line, Phil can fill in the exact dates. There was an experience of a community, Hanson, that pulled itself together under the threat of developing a large cranberry bog that was put on the market by an out-of-state owner uh, Northland Cranberry Company. Phil can supply the details. But I had the experience of getting in my car, coming down to Hanson. I remember a white church on High Street, maybe, yep. close there, and a group of maybe two dozen people sitting in that church trying to figure out what can we do as a community to keep this cranberry block of well over, well over 2,000 acres, whatever, from becoming just another development. And you say you can't develop a, a cranberry bog, you can because cranberry bogs have a lot of wetlands, but they also have a lot of sand because that's part of the process. So there's, there's high ground and it could be developed and I can show you places where it has been developed and it's not a good thing. But that experience of being there with a the community that got thousands of signatures in, in many days. Not to tell the state and the company that we're negotiating, not to tell them how to do it, but to say, we want Hanson to do it, figure it out. And that, I will never forget that experience. So that's probably more than five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a lot less than if I tried to tell you that. Al French, 87 years young. You know, it's really hard for me to keep up with Al. He's got so many ideas and projects he's got me working on. <laughs> he helped us with a little town forest in Holbrook, Massachusetts, which was about to lose its town forest. They did lose four and a half acres, but uh, they did save uh, 20 something acres. And then we worked with a town called Sharon, Massachusetts, which saved over 350 acres of the most pristine wildlands you've ever seen, Rattlesnake Hill. And Al was instrumental in helping get that going. And Al's been working on an idea, one of his many ideas, the Gateway 2 project. It's kind of an offshoot from this presentation, because we call the, the uh, Bay Circuit Trail our gateway. Um, that Gateway 2 is an idea that a lot of towns along the Bay Circuit Trail have little pieces of land that are slipping through the cracks because the big trust, the land trust can't get the little pieces of land. So how do we find a way to, to create a, a grassroots organization like Al created for the Bay Circuit Trail to help um, towns save those little pieces of land that are so important to our peace of mind and, and to the environment. On day 19 of my hike, I hiked along the Poor Meadow Brook to the Bur Burridge Pond Wildlife Management Area and then over the Indian Crossway along High Street into the Hanson Town Forest through Camp Kiwani and into Pembroke. So what is it we're doing on the Bay Circuit Trail? What is it we're trying to preserve and protect? All along the trail I experienced the beauty 
and I felt the healing restorative powers of nature. One of the reasons that Marilyn and I and Al are doing this work is because we want to bring attention to how important it is that we start caring for the earth in a, in a very active way. And we're going to join Phil Clemens right now on a hike through Hanson. This is the Familia Bay Circuit Trail logo and the good old white blazes that show you are on the trail. Since 1999, Phil Clemens has been working on the Bay Circuit Trail. He is on the Trail Committee and chairs the Open Space Committee in Hanson. He is also on the Bay Circuit Trail Alliance, coordinating Hanson and the Bridgewaters. Here at Smitty's Bog, Phil tells us that this was once a cedar swamp. Hanson is working with the Department of Agriculture to restore this land both by planting and by allowing things to go to seed, there will be a restoration of the forested wetland or some sort of wetland that was here before. But one of the main goals of the work Phil is doing with the Bay Circuit Trail Alliance is to improve the trails, get it off roads where possible, and get the word out so that people can take advantage of, of this resource. It's a place where people can go out and see the landscape that supports them, see where the water comes from, see where uh, the wildlife that everyone appreciates actually thrives and lives. And while Phil stresses the Bay Circuit Trail is a safe and enjoyably pleasant walk, there are challenges for all types of adventurers. Whether it's for a short walk, just you alone, or you and your family and your dog, or for a longer hike for more serious exercise purposes, there is a choice of routes, and it's available for us to all use. There's, you never know what you're going to see or who you're going to meet. Sometimes it can be just eye-openingly pleasant and astonishing. Back on the hike, along power lines, the clouds thicken, and the wind remains steady. A pine-needled path brings us to an open field surrounded by pines. A watering hole and a birdhouse border a cornfield. Cobs decompose as we hike by the first trail marker we have seen. Autumn is a time for passing. As the year grows <coughs> older, this bumblebee ends its cycle. We leave one conservation area to enter another. Algae covers water and we walk across sand. There is a primitive look about this place. In the Burridge Pond Wildlife Management Area, leaves fall, and thick gray clouds are overhead. This huge bog with its drainage ditch clogged with growth is a place to walk dogs and to ride horses. Some of that video was um, the Burridge Pond Wildlife Management Area, and then when you hike on the Bay Circuit Trail, you go through that section and up by the power lines. But then when I went back there and I, I saw the real Burridge Pond Wildlife Management Area, I was, un, I was blown away at how big that place is, how beautiful it is. Now we're gonna meet some citizens who are making Hanson green, and we're gonna meet a Boy Scout who rallied the town on a really great project. These mushrooms seem nibbled about their edges as we hike along. It was a much warmer time when we took a side trip to visit a community garden and a Hanson Boy Scout. Then like the next weekend we did, I think it was about 33 tons of gravel that we spread out and then we built beds. Jason Nickel explains the process of rebuilding a community garden that was having drainage issues and serious problems for the gardening community in Hanson. This young man rallied 80 to 100 volunteers during a six week period with a total cost of $21,000. This community garden was not only saved, but turned into a state of the art growing ground Support for this project came from local businesses, civic organizations, and the community. Still, how did Jason manage 
to make this vision come to life? It actually wasn't that hard. I just went to their meetings and I talked to the board members and I talked to the owners of the companies and they were looking at the project and realized that it was a very big project to go into to help out uh, an Eagle Scout candidate for. This is just amazing what he's done here. At first in the, the physical aspect of just having this place come to life and then the second part is bringing the community together. So many different volunteers that have worked to make this place what it is. Riding her bicycle is an example of CO2 emissions control. Marianne Damasio is the founder and chair of Green Hansen. She led us to Jason's story and came down to lend her support. We have a group of people that came together to build a more sustainable community and we really focus on the community aspect and we try to bring people together for um, things, events where we have an Earth Day, we have a cleanup day, we try to educate people so that they can be more energy efficient, save money. The founder and chair of the Community Garden Club, Evelyn Golden, is also an assistant program provider for Plymouth County 4-H. Under her guidance and visionary leadership, she has helped Jason to succeed. Hanson is a great community to begin with, and this just is another element to show that one of our um, youthful citizens, one of our town Boy Scouts, could do this with the community. And it's something that will be in our community for many years to come. And when the garden begins to deteriorate, say, 5, 10, 15 years down the road, we just adopt another Eagle Scout. Would you recommend these guys? <laughs> yes, I would. What would you say to them? Why would the scout be important? I believe that it teaches younger kids responsibility, and it shows them that you can still have fun at any age. Yeah. You know, it's because of environmental heroes like Marian Damasio and Maureen Toomey and Evelyn Golden that a lot of land has been protected and preserved along the Bay Circuit Trail. And it's hard to believe that I made that video six years ago. Jason Nickel couldn't be here with us tonight. I was hoping he'd come, but he isn't feeling well, so his parents came. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Nickel, thank you so much for producing such an outstanding young man. Uh, I did talk to Jason on the phone. I couldn't believe it. His, his voice has changed, and I'm sure he was <laughs> Six years at, at that age of life is, is a big change. But um, he is now working in real estate in Boston, and there's a project that was uh, delayed because of some kind of um, environmental, uh, environmental problems. And Jason is working um, on a project to get that going environmentally soundly. So he's taking his love for the environment and transferring it into uh, development, which is, a, I think, a fantastic thing. So thank you very much. On the fourth day of our hike, I hiked through the Willowdale State Forest, the Cleveland Farm State Forest, the Georgetown Raleigh State Forest, and then along Boxford, into the Boxford Center, to the Boxford State Forest. And Boxford's where we met an, am an amazing environmental hero, Nancy Merrill. This is an inspiring story of how a town came together to protect beautiful, pristine wildlands. I had the 46 acres on Huggies Pond, which is a beautiful pond in West Boxford. We had been working in that area in West Boxford to protect a number of fossils. And it wasn't easy. It took commitment, an investment of time and tenacity, a relentless perseverance. And then as development came in, one of us would sit at the planning board meetings, um, lobbying for trails through the subdivisions. Nancy Merrill has worked for many, many years, leading the charge to save land for trails and open space. Today she takes us on a tour of Hovey's Pond, Saving this place became a dramatic race against time. When they finally got a developer to sign on with the purchase and sale agreement, that started the, the days ticking away. The town had 120 days to come up with the money um, and another 30 days to close the deal. This beautiful Keystone property almost became prime real estate. 
but generous people put their money on the line to save this jewel for the people's enjoyment. PT Gold wanted to raise a lot of private donations uh, in order to help the town feel that this is a good possible plan to protect. We raised over $500,000 in about a month's time. And the town closed the deal with another $500,000, an astronomical feat. And this is a hemlock forest. Through Nancy's leadership and pioneering spirit, in the days of modern red tape, illegally dotting every I and crossing every T, Boxford has saved a wonderful area for the public's recreation. That's a really amazing story. And sometimes all it takes is one environmental hero to lead the way. And when we were up interviewing Nancy, we went into her office and she had stacks and stacks of paper all over her desk. Uh, she's a tremendous powerhouse. And uh, I also, I forgot to mention Phil Clemens when I was talking about environmental heroes, and he's here tonight. On day 13 of my hike, I walked, um, I, I went through a lot of green space, as you can see here, in the Sherburn area. I hiked along some roads, by a farm, through a suburban neighborhood, and then you can see this long, thin corridor of green that goes all the way down to the Rocky Narrows Reservation, and that's a really spectacular place. Now I saw a lot of beauty on the trail, and sometimes I even felt like I was in the wilderness. But I also saw a lot of threats to the trail, and not only to the trail, but to our environment. I'm concerned about the health of our forests and the ever-expanding encroachment of development into our beautiful, pristine, wild places. In Sherburn, they're working really hard to keep their town green. Let's take a hike to Sherburn. We're working with the town to get some general permits to do trail maintenance work. Chris Tolman is the president of the Sherburn Forest and Trail Association, and he also moved to Sherburn for the open space. He's a civil engineer and is certified in what he calls green engineering development. It's development, it's growth, but it's, um, I think they more referred to a smart growth or directed development where you center where you want the development and you try and preserve the open space because once the open space is gone it's pretty much impossible to get back. This is a section of the Bay Circuit Trail within Sherburn. At Chris's computer we get a virtual tour of the town, the trails, and all the development around Sherburn. Compare the downtown framing area and the amount of development and pavement. Compare that to the Sherburn. You can see mostly green. Uh, we can zoom in further and see there's still a lot of open space. Uh, you can see where the houses are and some of the bigger farms. Uh, there's a new development just across the town line into Ashland, a big residential subdivision. And although development is a huge threat to open space and forests, for Chris it's also about connecting neighborhoods and neighbors. A big piece for me is also connections between neighborhoods. I love being able to get out from my house and get to places and not have to drive. Some days I want to drive and it's great, but there are days I'd like to be able to walk to the center of town and go to Seattle Frosties for an ice cream. And I don't think I should have to drive to get there. So uh, we're building trail connections between neighborhoods that sort of links the neighborhoods and links the open space. Cutting edge technology. Can we get from a neighborhood here to a neighborhood here through the open town property? A progressive view of what our society could be and a return to the ageless values that seem to be imbued in our human consciousness. How do we find a way to use our resources wisely and for the common good? If you live in your house and you travel everywhere in your car, you don't really interact with folks, uh, you're in your own little world. If you walk somewhere or bike somewhere or ride a horse somewhere, you end up meeting other people out there, you end up talking to them, which means you know the people in your neighborhood better, you know the people in your community better, the woods. All this green surrounded by all this tar and concrete. As I enter the Rocky Narrows Reservation with its trails and fields, grasshoppers are flying about. A rugged climb and ledges remind me of the Appalachian Trail. Then on top of King Philip's Overlook with an elevation of 260 feet, there are views that any wilderness would love to be compared to. Hiking out onto Route 27, 
I marvel at the primitive beauty of the Charles River. Two kayakers paddle peacefully. Water reflects the sights, sounds, and the feelings of a companionship with nature. Old Route 27 hearkens to a simpler time. It cracks as the earth slowly regains itself. We are in Medfield now, on a hill, a large round mushroom underfoot. Now that's a mushroom. The scene, a rugged timelessness, and a black crow proclaims his right to the earth. And I am welcome back to the world of humor. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you. Thank you for bringing me those cool drinks and cool snacks. You know I couldn't have done this hike without you. And sometimes I don't think you get enough credit for all the work that you do for e-awakening.com. Thank you. I would also like to recognize Robert Kearns. He's here tonight. He's an environmental hero in my book. Um, Robert, what do you do? You're on the uh, Sierra Club? Yeah, I'm on the executive committee of the Sierra Club. Executive committee of the Sierra Club, and he just got out of college. And he's been working on a project in Braintree, bringing back the smelt and the river herring. And I mean, he's been the spearhead. He was after me for three years to do a story, and then I finally did it. And now I'm a Robert Kearns fan. Thank you, Robert. This next clip is an example of what is happening and what continues to happen when we don't protect our pristine natural places. We enter Sudbury Conservation Land and then Framingham Conservation Land and squeeze through an easement between private property. This is where I'm surprised to see construction, a brand new home sprouting up in these woods and we find others on both sides. And here, what I'm calling a million dollar view. The soil is disturbed, and it's clear we are not welcome to venture off the trail. And now we have an example of what environmental heroes can do, the Fowlers of Easton. And we learned that the key to conservation is education, environmental education. As the Fowlers enjoy walking the conservation land just behind their backyard, they fill us in on how important environmental education is. Children that learned long ago to love the land have stood to protect it, doing whatever it takes to let nature be nature. It's bred an ethic in the community of open space protection and appreciation of nature and the connection between the synergy between man and, and nature. So that's really done a lot for the expanding the acquisition program. So back when the Earth was first seen from space, when Rachel Carson introduced the idea of a silent spring, and the first Earth Days were just being celebrated, Easton caught the fever and did something about it. Now it's, you know, it's 50 years, 60 years later, and uh, you see that in second and third generation, the people that come to the town meeting, and when the issues have to do with protection of open space, that's an inner bred thing people remember. Oh no, I went to shoot past your camp, summer camp down a week and found I remember how special that was to me. The fathers of Easton were really excited to point out all the conservation land that the town of Easton has been able to protect. And this is a map that shows all those parcels. The greens and the blues are all conservation land that the town of Easton has managed to protect. And as Jim Fowler said, Easton has bred an ethic through environmental education. Investing in the future is teaching the children. Chen, Jen Cummings tells us why. We teach about all different forms of environmental awareness and education. Our teachers really specialize in working with the natural world and giving an appreciation of what the natural world gives to us and why it's important to protect it and also the animals, the resources that are in the natural world. Jen Cummings is the executive director of the Natural Resources Trust of Easton. She feeds some of the attractions here at Sheep's Pasture. This is just one of NRT's many parcels of land, preserving open space, rustic landscapes, and the educational opportunities that the outdoors has offered countless generations of children. When we're working with children, we are really working for the future, because if we can interest children in the natural world, it's so important because
because in the future we need people to continue to be interested and invested in protecting the natural world and the environment. The Bay Circuit Trail is our gateway back to nature, but we have to use the gate. Richard Louvre wrote a book, Last Child in the Woods. He says that most of the children in our society today have a, a disorder, NDD, Nature Deficit Disorder. And I quote Richard Louvre from his book, Last Child in the Woods. Lacking direct experience with nature, children begin to associate it with fear an apocalypse, not joy and wonder. Now, I didn't see many families along the trail, but one experience that I did have was off in the distance I heard these squeals of joy and laughter, and two little children go running by me, looking at everything, they're so excited, and standing behind them with a big smile on their face were their parents, because they were feeling that same joy and wonder. So we have this great trail, this gateway back to nature. We need to help to get more people out on the trails, especially children, so that they can learn how to take care of this environment. In our next clip, we're going to see how the Appalachian Mountain Club is caring for the earth. There are several roads to walk down. Where is the trail? It says to turn left. Then at Round Table Road, I encounter one of the biggest navigational challenges of my hike. I want to guess that not too many people have come down this trail, because right in front of me is this giant spider web right in the middle of the trail. <laughs> Hard to believe in this small section of woods, I feel like I'm getting lost. The boys told me to go straight ahead now. It's hard to tell. This is really a trail. It doesn't look like it. I think I can get lost in here. It becomes a bit of a bushwhack. Okay, I'm back on the trail. Let's see if it can uh, pan out for me. This is a really tough trail to follow. Really tough. And I struggled to find my way to Old Pond. Little did I know that nearly a year later, I'd be documenting a trail crew that was making this trail much easier to navigate. AOC has become a leading partner of the Bay Circuit Alliance, and with that, have brought our long history of uh, engaging volunteers in the stewardship of trails to uh, train them in those skills so they're confident and competent in uh, keeping the trail sustainable so that they're there and inviting and appealing for all sorts of users. The Bay Circuit Trails like logo, uh, tag, this is going to go up um, possibly right across the road there. On a day of service, Blue Cross Blue Shield employees are trained by the AMC in preparation to improve this section of trail. But there are all kinds of different people and reasons to get involved. By becoming involved in trail work, people often graduate to that level by saying, I've been hiking these trails for forever and I want to get involved. Or maybe they like building and like doing hard labor and that's kind of with trail work. You're getting out, you're getting dirty, and you're working hard, um, but by doing that, you're forging a new relationship and new connections with the place and giving back to the community for um, our neighbors, our friends from other states who are coming to hike the Bay Circuit Trail. Miss my cue. <laughs> we have one more video clip for you and it really doesn't need an explanation, except to say that we desperately need more environmental heroes. The earth, the plants, the animals, we all need more environmental heroes. And we need more stories about environmental heroes. That's why Marilyn and I and Al are doing this work, is because we want to bring attention to how important it is to take care of our earth. The Bay Circuit Trail, all trails really, could be our gateway back to nature. The Bay Circuit Trail, all trails, are a golden opportunity. Maryland has 
has been behind the scenes and as a person whose glass is half full, she was instrumental in keeping this video positive, keeping me from sermonizing and preaching about the dark side of the human impacts we have perpetrated on this planet. <laughs> Marilyn reflects on the memories that she takes away from this experience. We talk to a lot of people along the trail, so I get to meet a lot of people, hear a lot of stories, find out a lot about what people are doing. And for me, this one is particularly important because I'm a big proponent of knowing what we have in our own backyard. And what a backyard it is. 37 communities of trails, woods, forests, rivers, and streams. Bogs, wetlands, ponds, and all the insects, the birds, and the animals. And within this journey, we have uncovered a true and noble side of human nature. People at their best. We discovered that we have some gems and some treasures and a lot of people that are out there protecting what we have and procuring more of the open space that is still available and saving it so that we have it for future generations. We have mined our backyards for heroes. Not from the past, but alive and living now. Doing the unsung work that will only be noticed more and more as the years peel by. The Bay Circuit Trail could have perished. Our little backyard could have been endless chains of development. But they courageously fought on. And that is why we have this treasure. It's a real gem. We have something really incredible. And it crosses 200 miles of our own state. And a lot of people, I know I'm repeating myself, but a lot of people have gone to a lot of work um, spending some of them a good chunk of their lives working on this. We produced this video to find environmental heroes, people taking action to care for the earth. The bay is nearly silent as a cold damp chill is accompanied by drops of rain. Deep red and a lifeless color infiltrates the green. There were fields of flowers then in a birdhouse waiting for a tenant. A hawk searched in the sky for something to eat. It was a beautiful sight. Finally, we walked the last few feet of an amazing achievement, a 200-mile trail kept alive by sheer guts and determination. Together, our glass is full. There is always hope. This has been a tale about the keepers of the flame, those who chose to do battle with apathy and neglect. We hope that this is a tale of a great awakening. This is a tale of a 200 mile trail and all of the heroes called to the cause were taking a walk Paying respect to the swamps and bogs. The knows what I do best is this. <laughs> Tonight we have shared with you some clips from the Bay Circuit Trail videos and you can see the segments in their entirety on our website e-awakening.com and on the table outside of this room we do have our business cards and they have our website address on them. When you go on to the website and you go on to the Bay Circuit Trail page you'll see 22 separate videos. So say you are interested in hiking in the Concord area, find the day that has Concord listed underneath it, and if you watch that video, you'll get a good idea of what your hike is going to be like. And I'd also like to tell you about some other aids that are available to you for hiking the Bay Circuit Trail. One is AMC's interactive map, and that can be found on the website baycircuit.org. 
And also on that website, baycircuit.org, they have maps which you can print. And something that Dan found very helpful in his hike were the descriptions. And we do have the maps and the descriptions that Dan used on the table outside, and you can look at those as examples. We'd like to close this portion of our presentation with another song, and it happens to be one of my favorites, and I feel it puts into music what we saw in the last video. It's called One. Thank you, Marilyn. She does a whole lot more than this wave. <laughs> So much about who you are. It's more about who you become. In the face of the storm, we find some peace, like the eye in the middle. We become one. Find our trail, the quiet path reflects the magnitude. We cannot fail. Let's do the math. In the many there is solitude. Trails are our gateway back to Mother Earth. We can learn to protect her, make her what she's worth. The children are the future, they are what we teach. To show them a brand new world that's within their reach. Let's get out on the trail and feel the joy. Earth community trees, rocks, flowers, and soil. Let's join the adventure crew on the Bay Circuit Trail. When we come together, we cannot fail. We cannot fail when we come together as one. We'd like to thank the Hanson Library for having us here tonight to do our presentation. And we'd like to thank all of you environmental heroes who came out to see the presentation. And right now, we're going to hear from uh, Maureen Toomey and Phil Clemens. So Maureen, do you want to get us started? Okay. Um, as you know, I'm Maureen Toomey. I'm actually the secretary of Green Hanson. And everything I watched here tonight is like, it's my heart and soul. It's the reason I'm actually part of Green Hanson because what we actually watch tonight is what, what this whole Green Hanson bit is about. It's making Hanson sustainable. It's keeping all the treasures that we have and making the things that aren't quite treasures anymore better. So on that note, um, one of the biggest things we do here is something called Clean Up Green Up. Everyone's probably heard of it by now. The next one will be coming up in... Um, April 25th, which is actually Earth Day weekend. It's a 50th Earth Day. So I can't believe I remember the first one, but um, I think a lot of you in here probably did as well. So, um, but we'd really like people to come out. That's actually how I started. You start small and the next thing you know, you see something else that needs to be done and something else that needs to be done. So what we'd like to do is to invite everybody here to come and join the Clean Up Green Up. 
Um, also, if you want to do some more things, every Monday, the first Monday of every month, we meet at the police station here in Hanson from 7 p.m. to about 8.30. And you can just come by. Nobody has to walk out with a to-do list. You can just kind of get your ideas out there. And if you do want to do something when you leave, there's more than enough to do. So, you know, whatever. We want a little bit of everything. Um, another thing that we have is we have a Facebook page and we have a Twitter feed. So if you are on either one, check us out on Facebook. We try to keep everything together. If you want to get information, sign up on our email list, which of course is greenhanson at gmail. And um, just put your own email address in and we'll send you information out. We do not spam people. So we just send enough information to keep you informed and um, keep you involved. So anytime you see me, Mary Ann, who has actually started the group and she's still with it. There's a lot of new people, there's a lot of old timers, and there's a lot of history in this, this group. Nowhere near as much as in the Bay Circuit Trail, <laughs> but we're working towards it. So I don't know, Maureen. I haven't met a, a green environmental group like yours. Really? Yeah, you guys are awesome. Yes, we are. <laughs> you know, you want to uh, tell us what's happening. A lot is happening all the time. <laughs> and uh, we've just touched on a few things tonight. Uh, I'll touch on a couple of historical things, but then try to move to the things that are happening now. Historically, uh, I think one of the turning points in my life is the day I met Al French. I used to commute to Wilmington, and one day in my lunch hour, I was sort of surfing the web for historical information about the Bay Path that connected Boston and Plymouth, you know, back in the colonial days. And instead of Bay Path, came with this thing called Bay Circuit Trail. What is this? I'm looking at it, I said, the chairman, he's over in Andover, that's right next door. To and so I called him up. He said, come on over. So I had lunch with him. And my life hasn't been the same since. <laughs> but we've accomplished a lot of things. And one of the things, both from Al and other places I've learned, is you always have to be thinking and strategizing and visioning and uh, building partnerships, getting connected with people who make things happen, the organizations who know the rules, the organizations who know where the money is, the organizations like the Green Hanson locally or the State Department of Fish and Game. Uh, I can't. We don't have enough time to talk about all the connections. I will point out some connections in this room. Uh, in the back left corner, we have uh, Joan Pierce from the Department of Fish and Game, who is, the, who is in charge of acquisition of land for the state in the Southeast District. Is that fairly close? Uh, okay. And Joan has been huge in all this. And I first met her when we were, we were at a meeting at Bridgewater State. I've never seen this lady in my life. And uh, I saw someone in uniform. I said, wow, I'm glad you're here. And I tried to get her to maybe think about buying a small thing. And she says, well, we can't really do that. And I said, how about 2,000 acres nearby? And she got all interested. And, uh, and Barge Pond happened. It wasn't quite that simple. Uh, but uh, some other time, we'll, we'll tell the whole story. Al touched on it. Uh, and then we added another 240 acres when El Miss Ellen Stillman decided to convey her property. Every parcel has a story, uh, but you only have time to discuss them, let's say, if you're walking two or three miles with someone. But on the trail, it's all about connections. Connections with where you are, the history of the place, the, the what's going on there right now, the people you meet. And one of the best definitions I've ever heard of a trail is a series of destinations. Why would you be going from here to there unless you know where there is? Or do you think there's a there over there? Uh, we think that Hanson has a number of destinations, uh, places like Camp Kiwani, uh, places like Burridge Pond, uh, places like uh, actually like Wampatuck Pond behind the town hall. The sidewalk behind the town hall is part of the Bay Circuit Trail. And uh, there's a lot of things going on to both improve it and to make the signage better, make people understand well, what's out there, where is the there that we're talking about. and. Uh, we just need more people to be involved. We have a trails committee right now. It's, it's kind of under the Conservation Commission. We could use some help. <laughs> we actually are getting help from people, like I'll point out uh, uh, a great steward of the environment, uh, Rob McDonald back there. He helps us take care of the uh, uh, Rocky Run conservation area, which the person sitting behind him 
helped bring into existence 55 or 60 years ago, right, Alan? <laughs> uh, there's a long history, but there's an even longer future, and we just need people to be involved. Uh, give a call to the conservation office or to me, but uh, just say, I want to do something, and we'll find something for you to do. Uh, as recently as last week, we developed a, it's not really a trail, but a nice little pathway along uh, the side of uh, Poor Meadow Brook on West Washington Street. Uh, it's intended to be ADA accessible. Uh, there's a beautiful little vista there, but you wouldn't know it unless you uh, found you could park there and it's a way to get over to the river and we're going to be putting some signage there. We'll explain the history, but also what's going on there right now. Uh, several years ago, we had we hired some goats to eat most of the poison ivy. I mean, it's a long-term project, uh, but we could use more help. Uh, Hanson isn't all paved yet, and my God, it never will be. Uh, but we'd like we would like to be uh, the greenest town on the South Shore. And when we found out 20 years ago through Mr. French and others that we were on the Bay Circuit Trail, we had been there for 70 years and didn't know it. Uh, but now that we do know it, we're trying to act like it. And we just think there's a lot of really good things in place now, things that can be in place in the future. Uh, and I'll close by saying that it isn't just the Bay Circuit Trail, it's the Bay Circuit Trail and Greenway. Right, Al? Because it's not a 10-foot wide strip of something with leaves on it between the, the, the cities, although some places it feels like that. Uh, it's intended to inspire people to say, boy, this would be so much better if that 10-acre parcel could be protected. Instead of having nine houses and a cul-de-sac on it, wouldn't it be nice to save that, that vernal pool and those beautiful oak trees and things? And recently, we've had a project in town where we're doing exactly that. We need to finish the job, uh, but we have opportunities like that that are still among us, and uh, not just through conservation, but that's the group I chair right now, uh, and not just through Green Hanson, but the connections and the partnerships between all these groups, all these individuals, is what it takes. You can't do anything alone, it seems like, unless you're a billionaire, and even then you don't know what to do. <laughs> so basically making money, you don't know anything about your environment. But what we find is, in this community, uh, the century is gone where we had, let's say, ocean spray cranberries and the uh, county hospital and uh, everyone sort of worked locally. The next century or two, we get to decide what it's going to be like. And boy, it's fun to plan and strategize, but it's also a lot of work. So through uh, conservation and through the Community Preservation Committee, which by the way is very big, uh, I think the chair is right here, Tom Hickey. He's here of mine, we have a lot of ways to do these good things, uh, and whatever, wherever you might be in time and space with your career or your, the uh, what season in life it is, we can find things not only for you to do, but things to just plain enjoy. So, look forward to those conversations, and thanks to Alan and Marilyn and to, uh, and to uh, Dan. Dan and the whole bunch of people who know how to document things. I just run around and do things and they document it. Thanks, so, <laughs> thanks a lot. I'll tell you, I wouldn't be do documenting anything if it wasn't for people like Phil and Maureen and uh, Mary Ann and Robert and Jason and all of you um, environmental heroes that came out here tonight to share some time with us. It's fantastic to have you here and really like what Phil's talking about is that we, we really can change and create a world that our children are gonna thank us for. Uh, I know Phil has put in many, many, many hours. I, I know you don't have an odometer on you, but uh, boy, and Al French, I mean, the, the amount of time that Al has done this. And if I asked him, was it worth it? I know what the answer's gonna be. I know what the answer's gonna be. Yeah, it, it's definitely worth it because it makes you feel good inside. and. You know, you go out there, you do a little work, and, and it just changes your whole attitude. You start to see more beauty of nature and, and your surroundings. So I want to thank you all for being here tonight. I know the library closes at 8 o'clock, so we're going to kind of end it. And uh, if you have any questions, you can go to our website, e-wakening.com. There's a, there's a story on there that's called The Ghost of Nature that fills in because I wanted to give the idea that nature is something that could disappear in a sense so we want to hang on to it and if any while we're packing up if anybody has any questions um, 
Al, Dean, myself, I'm sure, um, Maureen and Phil would be happy to answer any questions. Right, and join Green Hansen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>